I'm back with some more Octoprint plugins to make your 3D printer better and safer. Octoprint is a very handy addition to 3D printing. We have a Raspberry Pi with special software designed to connect to the printer and control it wirelessly. I've made a guide to setting it up in the past, and I've also made a guide on some of the best plugins to extend its functionality. Today, I'm covering some plugins suggested by viewers in the comments of that video, as well as some new plugins to make your 3D printing experience better as well as safer. To install any of these plugins, we're gonna come up to the spanner in the top and then scroll down until we get to the plugin manager. From there, we can click get more, and then we can search for whichever one we're after. On occasion, you'll find a plugin that's not in the repo, and you can either paste in a URL or download a zip and then upload it back to your Octoprint instance. The first plugin we're going to install was highly recommended by a number of people in the comments, and it's called Print Time Genius. You've probably noticed that the print time estimate from your slicer and standard Octoprint is quite often out. But this plugin claims to learn from your printer over time to get it within 0.2% accuracy. We can search for it in the plugin manager and then click install. After the package has hopefully installed successfully, you'll commonly get a message telling you to restart and when you do so, Octoprint will restart with your new plugin loaded. Now installing a plugin won't necessarily add anything obvious to the screen. And in this instance, we need to come back to the settings and then scroll down to our plugins and then we'll find our new plugin menu. I chose to leave everything on default, but now you know there are other options if you want to tweak the performance. For a test, I've sliced a simple cylinder that Simplify 3D is telling me will take 12 minutes. Now when I started in Octoprint and click print, I'm expecting some things to happen. We notice there's a star here and the print time left is 1557, so let's check out if that's accurate. The preheating has finished and we can see that the print time has continued to count down despite the print not physically starting. We'll see how accurate it ends up being. We're part way in and the print time continues to adjust and we need to remember that this will get more accurate over time and it will learn how long it takes a heated bed and the hot end to heat up and include those in the timing. So it's just finished and it took 24 and a half minutes. So what I'm gonna do now is upload the exact same G code with a different name, and then we'll click and get a prediction and see if it gets closer to this. So we should now be able to click the star. The details load and although we've never printed it before, it's predicting the time very accurately. It seems that all of the comments were correct. This is just gonna get better and better over time. And I look forward to seeing its results improve gradually. Next up, we have the Exclude Region plugin, and this one was also highly recommended. The idea is that when you're printing multiple parts, and if one of them comes loose, mid-print, you can drag a box around that part, and then Octoprint will ignore that, saving filament and preventing spaghetti from going everywhere and colliding with the good parts, ruining them too. Let's do a quick practical demonstration, and I've set up four small parts on the plate. Midway through the print, a 3D printing ninja comes in and dislodges one on purpose. So how can this plugin help? To use this one, we're gonna to come to our G-code viewer, and then we can add a rectangle to the print, and we know it's our front left. Now we'll click accept, and everything inside this box should be ignored. Let's check back with the printer. As we can see in Octoprint, the red box is surrounding our geometry, and that matches our result on the printer. There was a little bit of filament that oozed out before we could activate the plugin, but the problem won't get any worse because the extruder is no longer going near the bottom left shape. I just used a rectangle, but there are far more options than that to use as well. And here is the finished print. As you can see, after I activated the plugin, no further extrusion took place and the end result is quite clean with minimal tidy up. In my opinion, this is one of the most useful plugins you could ever use with 3D printing. So there's some plugins that can definitely enhance your experience. But now let's turn our attention to safety. Marlin and other firmware comes with a range of inbuilt safety features. And I've covered these before. They include shutting down the printer when the minimum temp is registered, a maximum temp is registered, and the very important and often left out thermal runaway protection. 
In this video, I also showed you what could happen if any of these safety features aren't enabled. So if your firmware is set up properly, you should be right, correct? Well, not always. Check out this Ender 3 mainboard that's had a MOSFET failure. When we power it up, everything seems okay, but if you look very closely at the actual microcontroller, there's a crack across the top plastic surface. But the real damage is the MOSFET hidden underneath for the heated bed. You can see on the LCD that the target temperature for the heated bed is in fact zero. But you can see I also have probes connected to the output of the heated bed, and it is outputting a steady 22.5 volts, meaning the heated bed will be receiving full power and there's nothing the firmware can do. The only way to fix this situation is to cut the power entirely. Here's how our firmware normally works. Our power supply goes into the main board and that is used to control the hot end as well as the heated bed. But in our scenario, that's just not enough. By introducing a Raspberry Pi, we have control over the main board. And by controlling a relay in between the power supply and the main board, we have control over the power supply going to Marlin, which means we can kill the power even when the main board can't. And that's where our next plugin comes in, PSU Control. This allows us to turn the power supply on and off through Octoprint. One really nice thing is that on its GitHub, it has a wiki with lots of setup information as well as troubleshooting. You'll need to mount a 5 volt tolerant relay somewhere near your main board and Raspberry Pi. In this video, I'm using the Ender 3 and a case that I designed in a previous video. It's got room for the Raspberry Pi, buck converter, as well as a relay. The relay that we need will be $5 at the most. There's some different options when buying relays. Try to avoid one of these bare ones on the left. They have all of the pins that we need, but they don't have a breakout board. Others can be confusing because they have extra pins that aren't used. So instead, I'd recommend going with one with three pins on each side. One side takes the wires we want to switch, and the other side has three pins for logic from the Raspberry Pi. Back to our setup diagram, and we need to install wiring between the Raspberry Pi and the logic of the relay. This is the side labeled signal, 5 volts, and ground. Raspberry Pis have a series of general input-output pins across the top, and on their website, they have the numbers of the pins for these. I think it's easiest to use pin 14 because it has a ground and a 5 volts next to it. On the actual Raspberry Pi, it looks like this, and I use JSD connectors to wire them up. On my relay, I have signal, 5 volts, and ground, and then we skip the first pin and have 5 volts, ground, and signal from the Raspberry Pi. The next thing we need to take care of is the red power wire from the PSU to the mainboard. With the power off, locate the large red wire and find a place where you can fold it over and it'll reach the relay. You can then cut this, strip back the ends, and insert it into the relay terminals. Here's my relay fully wired up but there are three pins and only two wires, so we have a choice. If you connect to common and normally closed, power will go to the main board unless the Raspberry Pi sends a signal to turn it off. And this is more convenient because you can still use the printer without a Raspberry Pi connected. Instead, I chose to wire between common and normally open. This means the printer will never receive 24 volts unless it receives a signal from the Raspberry Pi. This is less convenient because you can't use the printer without the Raspberry Pi, but it's safer because there can never be any accidents. Back in our settings, we're going to scroll down to PSU Control, and you can enter your settings as you see on my screen here. Our switching method is going to be G-Code Command, and as we said before, we're using pin 14. If it's working in reverse of what you expect, tick or untick this invert box. If you want, you can put in your start or end G-code M80 or M81 to turn on or off the power supply. We also have these options here that when we tick the box and send one of these commands such as movement, homing or heating, that the power supply is automatically turned on after the delay in seconds put here. We can also automatically turn the power supply off when it's idle after the specified time, but only after the hot end heater cools to the desired temperature that we enter. Up in the top corner, we'll have this new icon here that we can click to turn on the power supply. It will light up green and you'll probably hear a click from the relay. This means your printer is now energized with 24 volts, which means it can move stepper motors and heat up the nozzle and bed. If I turn it off and then hit something like home, you can see that it automatically turns on the power supply to enable the stepper movement. This plugin by itself is highly convenient but it becomes much safer when we pair it up with temperature failsafe. After we install this and go to the settings, we need to click enable and then set our hot end and bed thresholds. 
The most common usage is to set a temperature above what you normally print. So if you do have a MOSFET that has failed and providing current to the heaters, this plugin will recognize it and cut the power within five seconds. There's only one tricky bit and that's entering the command here to get it to talk to our power supply plugin to cut the power automatically. Back in the wiki for the PSU control plugin, we have our answer. There's a line here that we can copy and paste into that box, but we need to substitute two values. The first is your content server, and that's simply your local IP address that you have for Octoprint. The second is your API key. That's something you'll find by going to API in your Octoprint settings. Substitute in those two values, save and you're ready to go. It's probably worth setting a really low temperature like 50 degrees on your hot end and then making sure the heaters and the power supply is cut off as soon as it exceeds this. One more that I haven't really used but I found interesting enough to include for other people to follow up is the Spaghetti Detective. It uses your webcam to monitor your prints and if it thinks something is loose on the bed, it can send you an alert inviting you to choose to shut down your printer. The interface can be accessed externally so if you have to go to work while you're leaving a print running, this is a little bit of extra insurance. The beauty of using a Raspberry Pi as a watchdog is that it's independent of your firmware and mainboard. Another level of redundancy for safety is definitely a good thing. I had planned to go a step further and fit an MQ2 smoke detector to shut off power automatically, but it wasn't sensitive enough. And by the time there was enough smoke to trigger it, cutting the power to the heaters would not have stopped the resultant fire. That brings us to the end of my list, but like last time, I'm sure there's plenty of great suggestions that you can leave in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.